yeah. I think uh, I think we are live now, now and uh, we'll be going. Yes, uh, it, it, it's live and uh, I hope that uh, you are able to see my screen very well. Hello. I hope I am audible and uh, we are live now, basically. So let me check if everything is going on fine in the YouTube streaming so that uh, the stream will not end. Yeah. Uh, are you all able to see my screen? Okay. So I hope that uh, my screen is visible to all now. And we will be live. Uh, in a few minutes, I'll be using my cursor. And let me start with the session in a few seconds. I welcome all first on behalf of NB Navle Sihangad College of Engineering, Solapur. I welcome you all. And this is Professor V. N. Zokare. I am Professor V. N. Zokare. And uh, I'll be dealing with a very interesting topic today. The topic name is Introduction to Natural Language Processing. And as you all know that this topic is going on like it is hitting in the market like anything. It's an advanced topic. And mostly the people who are dealing with the languages, so the language processing, so this is Webinar will concentrate more on language processing and all. So basically, we will concentrate more on natural language processing. And this natural language processing that we are talking with, or that we are talking about, is all about the English language today. OK. There are many languages supported by this NLP. The Python library supports many languages. Let me show you first which languages are supported by the Python library. So basically, the languages supported by Python library are German, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, Dutch, Greek, Norwegian, Lithuanian, and multi-language. So German and English are the starter models for the Python library. So basically, the library that we are dealing with today will be basically concentrating upon a library named Spacey. So we are going to deal with Spacey library today in Python. And this is all about natural language processing. So let's start with our presentation. So let's concentrate on what Spacey. So we are dealing with natural language processing, which is like, I want to process the language that I have written, the text language. Now let us understand where the applications are in the beginning. The applications of natural language processing are in various domains. Like you can find Alexa, Siri, various products like virtual assistants. And also, there are many products by Google which are in the market which actually implement these kind of projects where natural language processing plays a very important part. And natural language processing is a part of narrow AI right now. You can say it's a part of narrow AI. So there are two parts of artificial intelligence, as we know. One is narrow AI, and the other is strong AI. Narrow AI actually concentrates or focuses on only one single task. It's a dedicated task. Like we have our embedded systems. So it, it actually focuses on only one task, one simple task, or dedicated task. And if you go to strong AI, strong AI is quite general. Like it's like human intelligence. It can think in all the directions, possible directions. Right. So this natural language processing is a part of narrow AI right now. So let us begin with Spacey. What's Spacey? 
Spacey is a free open source library for advanced natural language processing in Python. It is designed specifically for production use and helps you build applications. So let me tell you that Spacey is designed specifically for production use and it helps you build applications on a wide variety of levels. And today we will also have a hands-on session on Spacey. We will work in Google Collaboratory and understand how Spacey works actually. So let us understand Spacey further. Spacey is also used to process and understand large volumes of text. So if you have large volumes of text, like in the blog, tweets, or comments on Facebook, or comments on YouTube, so anywhere if you find a large volume of text, or a volume of text written in the books, e-books, so you can process and understand that large volume of text by using Spacey. Now Spacey is used to build information and also it can extract information actually or natural language understanding systems. So it is used to build information extraction means you can extract information from a given, given text, given string in any particular language. Like maybe that string is in English or German or maybe any Dutch or any language which is supported by Spacey right now. And it is also used for natural language understanding systems. Like Alexa and Siri, so you have a great examples of Alexa and Siri and some virtual assistants which are even chatbots. So you can see the chatbots everywhere. When you visit a website, you can see a chatbot which is interacting with you, but actually you feel it's a person, but behind the screen, it's not a person, it's a chatbot. So understand the systems very well. So Spacey is also used to pre-process text for deep learning. So sometimes it is very essential to pre-process the text, to understand the sentiments, to understand the emotions hidden in the text, whether it is hatred or whether it is supporting or whether it is positive or negative. And for that, we need to do a lot of processing. And if it involves a lot of processing, hidden layers, so we get into deep learning then. For example, what is Spacey all about? So let us take some examples. What do the words mean in context? Like if I say the word Google, Google can be a noun because it's the name of a company. And if I say Google just in normal language, it's a verb because Google is like to search. So basically you can understand ki what Google is. So Google can be taken in the context like it's a noun and also a verb. So the context is very important to understand and that is what Spacey does actually. Now who is doing what to whom is also understood by uh, Spacey. Like it understands the subject, the object, the nouns, the proper nouns, the verbs, everything is understood by Spacey. And what companies and products are mentioned in the given text is also understood by Spacey. So if you write a word or a text, if any persons, date, numbers, products, companies, money, if anything is mentioned, Spacey is able to identify it. Understand it very properly. Spacey is a very, very, very strong library. It's a very strong library, a free open source library for advanced natural processing actually. And it also detects which texts are similar to each other. Nearly similar also. Like not 100%, maybe they are 80% similar, 70% similar. So it understands the correlation between the texts very well. So let us move forward with the Spacey. Features of Spacey. Let us understand the features of Spacey one by one. One of the most important feature of Spacey is tokenization. Now what is tokenization? Tokenization is nothing but it is segmenting text into words. So you can say that if I have tokenization, it is segmenting text into words or punctuation marks, etc. So it actually segments the text, breaks the text into various parts. Let me tell you first, ki what does Spacey contain actually? 
So as you can see on my screen, as my cursor is pointing, the red laser mark is pointing. This is what space is all about. It is a pipeline structure actually, which is named NLP. NLP is a pipeline in Spacey, which contains a tokenizer, a tagger, parser, and NER. Actually, tagger, parser, and NER, and all the other systems are part of NLP pipeline. Tokenizer is not a part of pipeline. Understand it very properly. Tokenizer is altogether a different thing. Okay, let us understand it when we get into the concept. Actually, in NLP, we implement a pipeline structure where there are taggers used to tag the text, parser used to parse the text, and NER, which is actually entity recognition, and it does the entity recognition in the text. Like it identifies the company's money, and also if anything is mentioned, like a person name or date. So all these things are done by the various entities that are present or the various elements that are present in the pipeline of NLP. So pipeline of NLP is very, very strong. And whenever we implement the NLP pipeline, it always creates an object named document, doc, D-O-C. So D-O-C is an object which contains actually the tokens of the text. So text is broken first into tokens. So this is the first process that happens in NLP. You give any text to NLP, it is first broken down into words. Let us see how it happens by some example. So we'll go to Google Colab now. And I will show you a code here in Google Colab. And we will see ki basically how this tokenization happens in Spacey. So this is my Google Colab notebook that I'm using right now. And by using this notebook, I would like to give you a brief introduction to the first code that we are having. Now, as I have told you, at the center of Spacey is the object containing the processing pipeline. So we have seen the processing pipeline right now, which contains a tokenizer, a tagger, a parser, and a NER, that is a entity recognition system for a text. So we usually call this variable NLP. And if you want to create an English NLP object, you can import the English language class from spacey.lang.en and instantiate it. So you can instantiate the object very well. You can use the NLP object like a function to analyze text. Now let us see how it happens, basically. See here, the code from spacey.lang.en import English. Let us understand very properly. It is very important if you are using an IDE. Now, since this is a Google Colab, a Google Colab notebook, I need not import or I need not install Spacey here. If I just import everything from Spacey, it takes it automatically. That is the beauty of Google Colab notebook. But since it is on cloud, it is also executing on cloud now. Understand it very well. Google Colab is executing on cloud. So basically, if you see all the things that are getting executed on the cloud now, right now. So this NLP that we are watching at is a language which is used for processing the natural language, which is English right now. And we are creating an object now. NLP is equal to English. So we create an object. Then we create the document that is the object out of the NLP pipeline. So this is the NLP pipeline, which belongs to a language English right now. You can also use German. You can also use Dutch. I will tell you how to use them later in the next parts. But right now, let us understand that we are using English. OK, so English is being used. Let me check the stream also parallelly. So English is being used now. So let me concentrate on English right now. So where were we? Uh, yeah, we were here. Uh, so English is being used as a language. And doc is an object that is created out of the NLP pipeline. 
So NLP actually is a pipeline which accepts a text right now. Hello world. Understand it very properly. It is accepting a string. So it is the object is created by processing a string of text with the NLP pipeline. So NLP pipeline uses the English as a language and NLP pipeline contains tokenizer. Understand tokenizer is used to break a given text into its words, into its components. So breaking or segmenting the text is called as tokenization. And that's what we are going to see now. As every program begins with a hello world, we are also going to start Spacey with a hello world. So let us check. Doc is an object created here. Let me just uh, expand this so that you will be able to see it properly. So let me say that, let me expand the screen, screen so that uh, the screen is visible to all of you properly. I guess it's maximized now and everybody is able to see the screen properly. Yeah. So we are concentrating on a doc object from NLP pipeline which accepts a string which is hello world and we are passing a text to it which is very simple right now hello world. Now doc is an object created. Now doc contains actually tokens, number of tokens. That is it contains actually the broken parts of the string or broken parts of the text. So if you see the text very properly hello world. So this hello is one part of the text, world is the second part of the text and the exclamation mark itself is the third part of the text. So it also includes punctuation marks, understand it very well. So Spacey takes care of not only words but also punctuation marks to understand what the sentence is all about. So. When you process a text with NLP object, Spacey creates a doc object. Understand it very well. Spacey always creates a doc object whenever you are actually processing a NLP pipeline. The doc lets you access information about the text in a structured way and then we can iterate over the tokens in the doc. So how to iterate over the tokens by using Python? So it's very simple. We are going to use a for loop here. So for token in doc, so doc is an object, for every token in doc, every token means for hello, for world and for exclamation mark, we are going to print token.text. Now token is actually a part of doc, understand it very well. Okay, let me show you pictorially what token looks like actually or what the doc looks like. So here it is, you can see it very well. So this is what a doc looks like. It contains tokens, means one token is nothing but one word or one segment of the text. So you break the text into segments and you just break them into words. Okay, fine. So let us get back to our code. So we have broken the text into tokens and we are going to print the text now, the tokens separately. So let us see how it works. I'll run the code. So let me run the code now. So when I run the code, understand it very well that it will give me the output like this. Yeah, you can see the output is hello world and exclamation mark. So you can see the output. I'll maximize it. The output looks somewhat like this. Hello world and the exclamation mark. So this is how your output will look like. So it has broken down the sentence into tokens, hello world and exclamation marks. No doubt we can do it by using list also. Yes, very much possible in Python by using the list and splitting the text. But, but why Spacey does this is to understand the language, understand it very properly. We are not arguing on the point that we can do it with the list or not, or we are not going into the depth of lists, dictionaries or tuples as such. But right now we are concentrating on only Spacey and Spacey involves a pipeline, understand the concept, NLP pipeline into which we create a document object and the document object contains tokens. And the first part is in every pipeline you always, the first process is you always break down the text into tokens, tokens and tokens. 
so these are the tokens of the text there are three tokens hello world and exclamation mark i hope this concept is very very clear to all my students who are watching this video so basically this is how the tokens are broken up or segmented into spacey okay so let us see the next part of the code in this next part of the code it's very interesting right now i have imported spacey assuming that spacey is installed you can install spacey in windows by using pip command pip or just python minus m and go on download right so basically you can use a pip command to install spacey pip install minus u spacey if you do it you can install this in any python id python 3x especially python 3 and above so you, i am importing spacey and i am loading something now now this is very 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 important to know what spacey is n core web sm it's a great thing it is actually a statistical model for english language developed for spacey it's a statistical model developed for spacey and it is for english language en stands for english this is type which is core and this is the source from where it is taken web and sm let us see it in de detail so let us go to the this thing what actually n core web sm is so this is the documentation for spacey and uh, n core web sm as you are able to see here is is like it's a english multitask cnn trained model actually so it's a trained model and you can install it by using python minus m spacey download n core web sm it's a small model sm stands for small model it is small in size the smallest of all the models let us see see the size is only 11 mb here you can see the size it is only 11 mb and the pipeline contains tagger parser and ner which are used for text processing to tag the text to parse the text and to identify the entities in the text so it actually the yawner or the yawner or the source that you say is web where it is a written text from blogs from news from comments so understand it very properly that this en core model of spacey that we are dealing with here in this code so this is loaded by using a command spacey dot load and you actually give here here you actually mention ki what kind of statistical model you want to load and there are many statistical models three types of stat statistical models one is as you can see here n core web sm which is a small model in size 11 mb second model as we go on is n core web md en stands for english understand so this is all about english so it's it's english and n core web md md is medium size and the size is 91 mb here 91 mb understand it very well 91 mb is the size it deals with vocab syntax entities vectors right 91 mb is the size understand it very properly and we have a large large model statistical model for english again with underscore lg which stands for large and this is 789 mb and it takes some time to execute because of its large size so right now in our google colab we have actually used a small size so that it will not take much time to execute so doc i am creating a doc object nlp and here you are able to see apple is looking at buying uk right startup and you are able to see some text here so let me minimize it and show it to you it will be very easy to uh, check
yeah so this is easy to check now yeah apple is looking at buying uk startup for dollar 1 billion so understand it very properly so there is a sentence here which is very very simple sentence apple is looking at buying uk startup for 1 billion dollar so for token in doc print token dot text so this is what we are going to do now so again we are going to print tokens so let us start printing the tokens yes so you can see here again the text is broken down into tokens but right now understand the fact very well that you are using the model statistical model here okay in the first code you did not use the statistical model you simply used import english from spacey.lang.el understand the difference you are using a module that is spacey.lang.en and you are importing english from it right another module or object named english from it to create a pipeline and then doc is a object which accepts the string and breaks down the string into various parts okay so let us understand it very well hello world we have seen this example already and it breaks down the text into hello world and exclamation mark now whatever we are watching at is the model statistical model that we have loaded a small model and then we have passed a string to nlp which is apple is looking at buying uk startup for 1 billion dollar and we are breaking down that token into various uh, breaking down that text into tokens right so understand it very well that we are breaking down that token into text and the, so the text is broken down into various words now so apple is looking at buying uk startup for dollar 1 billion so these are the tokens that are created understand this very properly so that we will be able to uh, process it in the future right okay so let me let me ask you a question what is n core web sm what is n core web sm you can leave the answers in the chat box on youtube live what is n core web sm what is n core web sm right so this is a question that i am posing you and you can leave the answers in the chat box okay fine let us go forward then with the next module in spacey see now i will come to a very very important part in spacey and that important part in spacey is part of speech understanding what part of speech is part of speech is nothing but you are tagging the sentence and you are tagging the words like whether it is a verb or noun so you are identifying it part it's part of speech and tagging it as a verb or a noun or a proper noun or whatever adverb or a determiner or anything that comes up so you are just tagging and you are checking for the dependencies okay so let us see an example of uh, part of speech tagging here in the video right now so what i'll do is i'll try to run this code see here this code is simple again i am loading the n core web sm and i am having a sentence here which says apple is looking at buying uk startup for dollar 1 billion and for token in doc we are just saying token dot text token dot pos now pos is nothing but it is a part of speech that we are going to identify for the text so let us run this code and see how it works so now you can see that the text is broken down into various parts apple is looking at buying uk startup for dollar 1 billion now apple is p r o p n that is proper noun is is auxiliary it's a auxiliary verb actually is a u x as you can see looking is a verb looking 
is a verb and at is adp now what is adp if you want to find out actually if you want to find out there is a very good function to find whatever is written here for example suppose i say spacey dot explain and i type a d p so a d p i type it and i execute this code so when we execute the code understand that it is going add position it is saying that adp is nothing but add position so add position is something like at and for so the words that are connecting actually the sentences at and for okay so you call them as prepositions i guess uh, i have studied english a long time back so maybe i don't know but these are called as add positions in spacey aux is auxiliary verb looking is verb at is add position buying is again a verb uk is a proper noun p r o p n is proper noun startup is a noun for is again adp dollar is a symbol one is a numeral billion is also a numeral it's a number so one is a number and billion is also a number so understand it very properly that you are having such a wonderful thing in spacey that it is trying to identify the parts of speech accurately accurately great package actually this package is very great and if you understand the package you will be able to see that this package will be actually using will be actually using a uh, n core web sm it's a statistical model and this statistical model has all the facilities to identify these things understand it very properly that you have a pipeline pipeline contains a tagger a parser and a ner and many other parts you can develop your own pipeline also since spacey is open source you can develop your own pipeline inside spacey so there is no doubt that you can go ahead and get into the spacey.io site spacey s p a c i c y dot i o documentation and you can search for how to develop the pipelines for spacey you can develop your own pipelines also right it's open source so don't worry about it then we have see understand that spacey is not any software service okay so you may be under an impression that spacey may be a kind of software service uh, a service hosted on some cloud okay it's not like that spacey is a free source library for python and it is especially designed for production use in natural language processing okay right so what we have seen right now is nothing but we have broken the string or text into tokens and those tokens we have identified for those tokens what are the parts of speech okay fine so let us go ahead with the presentation once again so part of speech tagging is done assigning word types to tokens like verb noun proper noun De determiner or maybe as you have right now seen add position right so there are many things and then dependency parsing is done assigning syntactic dependency labels okay now what is this let us see very properly okay so in this actually you can see uh, an image an image here so you can see an image here and this image actually is containing a sentence she ate the pizza she ate the pizza this is the sentence actually so i'll use a, a laser pointer here it will be beneficial for us to go through the uh, this thing so she ate the pizza this is the sentence here okay and you can see that in this sentence basically you have a noun you have a determiner the is a determiner and eight is a verb she is a proper noun it's a noun it's a proper noun 
So understand that eight is a verb, and she depends on eight. Actually, eight is a root now here. So if you understand graphs in computer science, the root of the graph is eight, which is a verb. Who ate, and what did that entity eat? So who actually ate the pizza, and what did she eat? So you can ask two questions. One is a subject. So you can go for a subject. Subject is she, and the other is an object. And object is what pizza. So you can ask two questions. What did she eat? And who ate pizza? Right. So there are two answers. She ate the pizza, and also uh, pizza is an object, and she is a subject. Right. Who ate the pizza? Who? So if you are asking the question who you can say she ate the pizza so she becomes a proper noun which is subject now the subject object and the root so basically understand this is how a sentence is broken down by spacey into various dependencies she depends on eight pizza also depends on the action eight so who ate pizza okay and she ate or she eats what or she ate what you can ask these questions properly right the is a determiner which is also having a dependency on pizza right so understand this very well the pronoun she is a nominal subject attached to the verb here in this case it is ate right the noun pizza is a direct object it is attached to the verb ate again it is eaten by the subject she right so eight becomes a root of the graph eight is a root now so spacey breaks down the sentences into roots forms a graph and then it knows how to get through the graph properly very interesting and it understands the sentence by forming graphs by forming trees actually you can say trees right so this is an interesting fact in spacey that we are going to deal with and you can see that how spacey works next part let us go to the next slide so the next slide is yeah so this is the next slide now how is the tokenization done in spacey what are the rules for tokenization right now there are some exception rules in the tokenizer understand it so le let us understand by this example let's go to ny with exclamation mark right so there is a prefix so double quotes are separated then let's go to ny exclamation mark now here we have an exception what is an exception exception is anything that contains punctuation like commas periods hyphens or quotes okay so here there is an exception where there is some exclaim some marks here a punctuation marks between let and s it is broken down let and then s go to ny exclamation mark now there is a suffix here understand it suffix is an exclamation mark here again exclamation mark okay so exclamation mark is again broken down and it becomes let s go to ny exclamation mark and then double quotes good double quotes is separated as a suffix now again there is suffix exclamation mark which is separated and then at the end you have the whole sentence broken down into let s go to new york with a exclamation mark this is the final so this is what spacey does let us understand it properly that spacey actually works on some rules which are called as exception rules for example don't does not contain white space but should be split into two tokens do and nt while u dot k dot which is uk should always remain one token so understand it very properly 
n dot y dot here remains only one token it is not broken down as n and y separately it is an exception rule in tokenizer that not to break this into two different parts it remains as n dot y dot okay and u dot k dot remains as u dot k dot only but if it, if there is a word like don't okay which does not contain a white space but should be split into two tokens that is do and nt right so n apostrophe t t so that is how it is broken down into you can see an example here lets is broken down into let and apostrophe s which is nothing but a exception rule so you can see exception here and exception rule is applied here and lets is broken down into let and s in spacey okay and then again there is a suffix suffix means punctuation marks again punctuation marks are the double quotes so double quotes are separated here again there is a suffix which is exclamation mark then it is separated and then if there is an exception they go for an exception and they separate it what is exception n dot y dot is exception so n dot y dot since it is exception it is kept as it is understand it very properly n dot y dot is kept as it is clear with this so i hope everybody is clear with the concept of uh, this spacey okay fine right let us proceed forward with the next part we will move on quickly we have half an hour with us and within the next half an hour we'll be uh, quickly moving through the things so if you want to know any meaning of the thing in spacey like suppose i want to know what is p r o p n because this is a Uh, part of speech it's a tag given to apple apple is tagged as p r o p n okay so let us understand it very properly if apple is tagged as p r o p n here you can just uh, ask for spacey dot explain what is p r o p n okay so p r o p n if i type it and if i run this code if i run this code it says proper noun it says proper noun a very good answer by spacey right okay right so i want to ask you the next question to the audience you can post the answers in the chat box on live youtube okay the question is what is token dot pos what is token dot pos and what it does actually what is token dot pos and what it does please post your answers in the chat box fine thank you i'll be going ahead with a new topic in spacey and that is recognition of entities now okay what is entity recognition understand it very properly the code remains same the concept remains same you don't have to worry about the syntax you can get the syntax on the web just understand the concept very well how spacey works creates a pipeline in the pipeline there are tagger parser ner that is entity recognition systems and many more systems which you can develop further and in the beginning there is a tokenizer which breaks the sentences into words first and then it processes it through the tagger parser and ner separately clear with this it is very very important to break the sentences into words and go ahead with a tagger parser and a entity recognition system so let us see what it does spacey dot load n core web sm and as we know sm is a smaller statistical model of all with uh, whose size is how many mb 11 mb okay so 11 mb is the size of this uh, statistical model as we know and uh, this model basically concentrates on the most important part and that is the statistical modeling in your nlp right so for ent in doc dot ents means for every entity in doc dot entities we are going to print entity dot text entity dot start character entity dot end character and entity dot label which is very very important here 
let us run this code and understand what this code does actually so let us see how the code behaves okay so the code behaves somewhat like this apple so you can see the sentence apple is looking at buying uk startup for dollar 1 billion okay so what is an entity here apple apple is o r g it starts at 0 and ends at 5 so it, it, there is a start character and the end character so 0 so you know that everything begins at 0 the index is 0 here 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 is the next space understand it 5 is the next space that they are having so anything between 0 and the space is apple and it is an organization org means organization let us see what org means okay so let us uh, add a code here and i will type here spacey dot explain so let me add it sorry for the caps lock so spacey spacey dot explain and in two brackets what i'm going to give now is org what is org org in the text okay let us run this and see what exactly is org in the text okay so it's running now yeah see here it says uh, org is any company any agency any institution etc so it's an organization totally okay so you can understand this very well by executing spacey dot explain org what we are looking at is we have broken down the sentences into tokens and we are recognizing the entities of the tokens okay so tokens are apple then you have uk and then you have dollar 1 billion okay these are the entities that the species recognizes very well so apple begins at the start character is 0 the end character is 5 and it is an organization uk starts with character number 27 here here uk it starts at character number 27 and it goes till 31 which is a space next space okay and it is a gpe let us understand what gpe is now so i'll type here g g p and e okay okay guys let us see what gpe is now so gpe is countries cities and states great so uk is a country uk is a country so you can use uk us whatever countries are there mentioned in the spacey you can use it like let us modify the sentence and say that okay apple is looking at buying an indian startup so let us say that it is going to buy indian startup buying india startup for dollar 1 billion okay right so let us say uh, if i run it if it identifies india or not yeah it identifies india which starts at 27 and it is at 32 and it again says that india is a gpe what is gpe so gpe is nothing but it is a country city or a state understand it very properly it's a geographical location it's a geographical location and the entity recognizes it as a position geographical position okay so it's a country it's a city or it's a state understand it very properly so in your nlp pipeline you have a tokenizer which breaks the string into tokens and then there are entities which are recognized so for every entity in the doc dot entities or ents so apple india and dollar 1 billion these are the three entities that we have gone through and see here dollar 1 billion is recognized as money great money 
it's actually money so it should say money right great great thing so spacey actually does these things like breaks down the things into the uh, entities and it recognizes the entities very well okay right so let us uh, dwell with the next part let us go to the next part again okay so you see here it's very simple now i have doc the object that is created from the nlp pipeline and the nlp pipeline actually constructs the pipeline with a text called hello world now hello world with exclamation mark okay and we know that it contains tokens now the doc object contains tokens okay and the token we can display a particular token actually by giving its index so doc 0 actually prints if i print that token dot text and if i say doc 0 to that token let us see how it prints it prints hello okay so hello is the word that it prints and this hello word is nothing but the at index 0 right let us see what it prints for 1 so let us say doc 1 and let us run it again so run this so it will print world okay and then at 2 at 2 let us see what it prints at 2 it will print an exclamation mark because this text is broken down into three tokens hello world and an exclamation mark understand it very well that the nlp pipeline or the tokenizer takes care of punctuation marks also right so these double quotes are not part of the punctuation marks understand it these double quotes are part of the format so double quotes i cannot take now are you understanding double quotes are part of the format and hello world and exclamation mark are nothing but the three tokens that are present in the nlp pipeline so now i can also say like this doc and then i can say and then i can say very well doc and i can say one colon 3 one colon 3 and let us print this oh it printed world and exclamation mark understand it very properly one colon 3 means it starts at the index 1 index 0 is hello index 1 is world so it starts at world and it goes till 2 excluding 3 3 is excluded so there is no token with an index 3 understand it very well okay right understand that there is no token with the index 3 here there is no token with the index 3 right so there are three tokens one with index 0 one with index 1 and other with index 2 that is your exclamation mark right so you are printing that token dot text and you are having just like you are doing in list slicing you call it slicing right so you can do the similar slicing here also for the tokens but you can you should concentrate on the object that is created the doc object so it's a document object the document object contains tokens and further you can process the tokens clear with this right so this is very easy very very easy so answer my question in the chat box i don't know how many people are answering the question but i am not looking at my live session right now because i am busy explaining you guys uh, so let me ask you a question what actually is this nlp nlp what is nlp pipeline and what does nlp pipeline contain inside it okay and answer my next question does nlp pipeline contain tokenizer or not does it contain the tokenizer or not or does it only contain the tagger the parser and the ner okay fine okay tagger is nothing but it is identifying the parts of speech understand it tags the text with part of speech the entities and all those things okay fine 
yeah there are many interesting things in spacey and as we move forward let us see the lexical attributes of spacey okay now what are the lexical attributes let us see so these are called as lexical attributes of spacey there is a sentence which is called it costs dollar 1 or you can simply write a number here also dollar 10 for example with a full stop with a full stop okay can anybody tell me how many tokens are there here tokens how many tokens are there let us count first token is it second is costs okay the index of it is 0 what is the index of costs it is 1 what is the index of dollar it is 2 what is the index of 10 it is 3 and what is the index of full stop it is 4 so there are these many tokens it costs dollar 10 and full stop okay and now what i am printing see here print indices so i am printing the index for token dot i so it has created tokens out of the doc object so token dot i you can simply say token dot i for token in doc for token in doc so for every token in doc it has token dot i right so dollar 10 since it is like a connected token we can say okay do token dot text for token in doc token dot is alpha token dot is punctuation and token dot like number let us see the answers and let us explain through the answers properly so see here there are four indices created 0 1 2 3 4 5 actually 0 for it 1 for costs 2 2 for dollar 3 for 10 and 4 for the full stop okay so as we can see it very clearly here we can see it very clearly in this that there are five indices created 0 1 2 3 4 and text is it costs dollar 10 with a full stop it's a list now right because we have created a list here so if everybody understand the list in python everything that is there in the text bracket or a square bracket square bracket sorry so it's a square bracket so that's a list so we have created a list list here and this list is containing the indices for every token so as i said there is a token for it there is a token for costs a token dollar a token 10 and then dot that is a full stop okay right so here we have printed what we have printed the indices and the text now the next is token dot is alpha is alpha gives you whether the given token is alphabet or not if it is alphabet it is true if it is not a alphabet it is false it is not alpha numeric understand it's alphabet alphabet means it should be word okay fine containing a to z only so let us say is alpha so it is alpha so it is true it's alphabet costs true dollar is not alphabet so it is false 10 is a number it is not alphabet it is false and dot is a full stop which is a punctuation mark it is not alphabet so it is false again okay great so is punctuation right so if it is a punctuation or not so it is not a punctuation it's a false costs is not again punctuation false so what is a punctuation here punctuation we can see at the end only that is full stop so where it is true actually so is these actually this function is alpha is punctuation like num actually they return me boolean variables either true or false so in the text whether the given in the string whether the given word is a punctuation or not it is returning me so it is not punctuation false cost is not punctuation it is false dollar is false 10 is false uh, sorry 10 is false and dot is true so full stop is a punctuation so it's true and for number yes 10 is a number so 10 is only number so for 10 the value written is true i hope this is clear to everyone this is all about the 
lexical attributes of spacey these are called as lexical attributes is alpha is punctuation like num and there are many other lexical attributes again going forward okay fine so we have the dependency also and uh, let us see the dependencies afterwards i have installed something called as n core web mda and as we know md is a medium sized statistical model for your spacey nlp okay it's a medium sized statistical model right so uh, the size is i think 91 mb for this the first size is 11 mb then 91 mb then the next size is 789 mb for 789 mb it is lg okay large so small medium and large it depends on the size right so these are the statistical models that we are loading for the pipeline nlp pipeline and then what we are looking at is very 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 important okay but for this you have to you have to install this n core web md how to install it so this is the format to install it python minus m spacey download n core web md okay right and then you are going to run this you you will see that is successfully installed okay download and installation is successful and you can now load the model via spacey okay so it says you can load the model via spacey right so let us run this and see what happens so it's taking time but let us because it's md medium size so it will take some time to run but let us understand the code what it is doing actually there is an object named banana and it is created from nlp.vocab banana okay so it's named banana here right and then there is an object which contains dog okay dog so it is named dog now there is another object fruit which contains which is of type fruit and there is another object called animal which is of type animal so it is given by nlp.vocab and nlp.vocab is only available in web underscore md understand it very properly that this nlp.vocab is available only with web underscore md okay so vocab banana it is a banana object dog dog object fruit a fruit object which is a type fruit animal which is of type animal okay right now what is this doing see it is checking the similarities so is dog similar to an animal okay see here is dog similar to the fruit and what answer have we got for the first thing 0.6618543 so it's a answer which is given by correlation between the two objects is dog an animal or not you can find it is 66.18% and is dog a fruit it is 23.5% which is least because dog is not a fruit there is no 100% accuracy here because uh, it's a model and it's a statistical model where the statistical model works on some machine learning models at the back at the background and they try to correlate the objects okay so they are trying to correlate the objects is dog an animal or is dog a fruit so if the dog is animal very similar to an animal so the most similar thing dog is most similar to animal it's an animal so it is 0.6618543 and dog is not similar to a fruit so 0.23552851 so it, the similarity is very less over here right or the correlation you can say is very less over here technically speaking it's correlation okay banana dot similarity fruit and banana dot similarity animal okay so is banana similar to a fruit or not so 0.6714 is the percentage 67.14 is a percentage and 24.27 is a percentage for your banana as a animal so it's not an animal actually so the similarity is less it's a fruit so similarity is more here i hope these are 
very very clear to everyone very very clear to everyone okay so i will come to the end of the session by going through this uh so i wanted to ask if there are any questions any questions from the audience please go ahead with the question shoot the questions i'll be able to answer the questions in the chat box or through the audio and video yeah nlp is a pipeline nlp is a pipeline it is it is containing it is containing a tagger a parser and an er okay tagger is nothing but it tags it tags okay so basically understand that it tags uh, the particular word whether it is a noun whether it is a pronoun whether it is a verb an adverb or it tags the entities also whether it is a person an organization or whatever like whether it is money it's a number so it, that 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 comes under tagging okay and normal uh, uh, entity recognition is like it recognizes the entities like a company organization a geographical location okay so this is all about like uh, tagging and then you can go ahead with uh, many things okay how to learn nlp a very good question so you can you can start learning nlp with a basic introduction to nlp from youtube so you can go to youtube and type basic introduction to nlp and watch some videos on nlp watch some videos very great videos on like uh, you have videos on nltk which is again a library nltk which is again a library but spacey makes it more easy so spacey is the latest so it goes on like that right and you can start coding by going to various websites like you can go to spacey documentation spacey.io and you can see on the on my screen now right so spacey.io you can go to the documentation part of spacey and you can start learning spacey there are many tutorials on natural language processing it's a very interesting topic because it is not restricted to only one language understand it very properly it deals with many languages again okay deals with many other languages many many languages like german dutch french and all other languages okay uh, any other question where it is applicable okay great great question so where is nlp applicable or where is spacy actually applicable nlp is applicable in chatbots because or uh, applications like virtual assistants where you have alexa uh, or you have siri from apple or you have various chatbots and virtual assistants and also you can develop your own chatbot like if you want to develop your own chatbot also you are going to use nlp natural language processing so these are some of the applications of nlp can we use it with raspberry pi yes i think because raspberry pi if you configure it Uh, and if you process the audio audio or you can process the sentences text coming up from uh, mobiles and you can if you can decode those texts easily and take actions by using raspberry pi yes you can do it very well that's great question that's great yeah we can do it with raspberry pi also nlp and nltp what is this nlp and nltp is same or different i guess that it is nltk nltk is a library of nlp nlp is natural language processing nltk is a library again like spacey okay are there any questions uh, how to recognize what is this question how to recognize the special symbol in the alphabet yes yeah, special symbols are like see here special symbols can be either punctuation marks or dollar or whatever right so it can be recognized in the uh, in the entity in the nlp by using entity recognition or maybe uh, uh, like a parser or a tagger right to learn nlp firstly we have to learn python then start learning nlp do we start directly learning nlp 
oh uh, it's a valid question ketan so actually yeah uh, see here python we can learn parallelly python is just a language which is used for nlp a language which is used for implementing natural language processing so it's not that natural language processing is implemented only by using python if we are comfortable in some other language and if nlp is implemented in c++ or maybe java which is object oriented you can very well implement it by using those languages but python as such is ruling the market currently and it has various libraries great libraries coming up and these libraries are so amazingly different in python that you can use them very easily right and that's why python is like predominant in the market right now right so anyway python is just a uh, one of the solutions you can say not 100% solution okay sir stemming in nlp means stemming okay is there something called as stemming or it is lemmatizing or segmenting stemming okay maybe you are uh, pertaining to the graph or trees so you can cut down the branches of the trees and you can say that you can uh, convert the text into stems of the branches the branches of the trees so that can be stemming okay and there is like segmentation and there is also lemmatization in nlp okay so basically there are various processes as i have said so nlp pipeline contains various processes right and these processes are at different levels okay what problem can nlp solve yeah nlp can solve a lot of problems basically it can understand the language and it can be a virtual assistant to disabled persons first and it can also be useful to solve problems related to like wherever we want to use language like uh, we want to control anything by text or speech there nlp can be very beneficial okay gtts if you know uh google text to speech synthesizer i don't know how many of you know this many of you may be knowing this gtts the google text to speech synthesizer again this is a library okay and this library actually converts the text to speech it converts the text into audio it's a reverse process okay not audio into text but text into audio so basically you can take help of such libraries like gtts or any text if you want to control if you want to analyze the text for example you want to analyze the sentiments of the people so if if somebody is very nervous and he wants to speak to you and he is not speaking properly with you how will you analyze how will you analyze the comments whether they are positive or negative okay so it's all about sentiment analysis it it's all about analyzing the text the comments and everything that comes up on the web okay and you have like many translators available okay so which can translate the language languages from one form to another form english to uh, german german to whatever hindi or what uh, whatever you want right so google translator if you are using that can be the best example thanks ravindra for uh, reminding me of google translator thank you ravindra yeah any other question that is coming up from the audience yeah thank you very much to all the audience i believe that the audience has enjoyed the session and uh, i don't know how was the uh, this thing like uh, uh, the session overall was it streaming well was it streaming well and did i explain it well like uh, are you comfortable Uh, now do you know what spacy or nlp is everyone so is everyone comfortable with what i have told you i hope that uh, uh, everyone is comfortable with what i told you i need your feedbacks in the chat box if you are quite comfortable with what i explained to you regarding nlp and spacy using the natural language processing we can move ahead and we can end the session again where we use ner by srinivas okay there is a question here where do we use ner 
so ner is used in uh, see it's entity recognition right so if you have like something like you want to read a document okay and if you want to read the document and if you want to know what that document contains right and you want to tag the entities in the documents like harry potter okay you are reading a harry potter book or you are reading some document related to an organization or a person and if you want to tag that document with entities like what is this is this a person is this a geographical location is this money is this a number and you want to identify it because see here identification is very very important here and identifying that is actually the knack of nlp and that is the correct application of nlp okay and by identifying this we can actually do a lot of processing again we can identify various things in it like suppose i say go what do you understand from go go is a verb right but again if you see go is also a language a new language okay so go is a noun in this case like i said google google is a noun and google is also a verb because google we use it for searching so we say that let's google it's a verb now and google is a noun how to identify it how does the computer identifies it how does a machine understands it to make the machine understand we are using nlp understand it it's not for human beings human beings can identify the language very well okay if they learn the language they can identify everything very well okay is working with on core web lg have access the properties of previous both models yes yes zoha they have the uh, access to the properties of previous models but the size is big be careful because if you use the large statistical model which contains 789 mb the the size is huge and it will take a lot of time for processing okay so zoha i hope that answers your question thank you all thank you very much uh, i'll end the stream now thank you all for giving a huge response i'll come back with more sessions